Testing one, two. Welcome to the class, Tartu. Oh, uh, hello, sir. Sorry, some other reason I didn't send you the link. I was pretty sure I sent it to the everyone on the, I don't know, you know, technology can sometimes just, I don't know, bunk us or whatever. Yes, sir. If you haven't received a link by like 10 o'clock in the morning, then you must know, look, it's yes, sir. or something, then you must immediately let me know. Okay, then I'm also expecting you to tell me what you are doing at the moment. Uh, right now, I'm still finishing up um, trigonometry. Trigonometry. Have you done triangles and identities? Okay, I've done. Okay, so far, like, I'm doing uh, uh, reduction. It's still reduction, so because it's a long thing. Yeah, um, we must move from there. Yes, sir. So you're not finished with, you haven't done triangles or anything? No, sir. Okay, we have to, remember, I'm not, I'm not uh, setting the pace, you are. In other words, I'm not, I'm not following a specific schedule to finish the term's work. You are following that schedule. I'm here to help you. Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Yes, ma'am. Are you connected? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, do you understand that, Tartu? So I'm not gonna if I'm not I'm gonna help you with the stuff that you're busy with, uh, primarily. Uh, I'm not taking stock of where you should be in the in the in the course. Yes, sir. Okay, so if I think of reductions, I think you are behind shit. Yes, I'm behind, sir. Yeah, that's a problem. Right, let's start. I don't know where Bianca is. Yes, All right, do you need help on reductions? Somehow I get the, I always get the things right. The, the sum. All right, good. That's not bad news. So yes, we've, sir, done, not. we've done a, a lot of examples. Yes, sir. Okay. Can we say bye to this? Yeah, we can say bye to it, sir. All right, good. What do you want to do now? Identities or triangles? You haven't looked at either. 
No, I haven't locked the triangle. Okay, let's do that then. It's important. Um, identities and triangles. We'll look at both of them. Sir? We'll, we're going to look at both sections. I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? I couldn't hear you. Uh, dear sir, but the thing was cutting. Okay, and now? I can hear you proper. Okay, Bianca is here. Welcome to the class, Bianca. Please don't. Hello, sir. We what? what Sorry, sir. Uh, but, sir, well, I'm. I have a math class now as well, so I'm just doing all the for our task and everything for this week. Okay. Have you done any trigonometry identities? Uh, no, sir. Not. And triangles. So I haven't had um, that done for long. It's a problem. I know. You need to do maths every Sorry. day. We're gonna look at. Yes, sir. We're gonna look at your identities and play around with a couple of sums, and I'm gonna explain the triangles today. We have to. I'm not okay. dictating the pace because I don't know what you need to finish for this term, but. If I look at the other okay. impact class, they are finished with identities. Okay, sir. Good. Now, good news. In grade 11, there's only two identities that you need to learn. I'll show okay. them now. All right. I'm copy and paste them. You need to take a screenshot of this. There's your two identities that you're going to learn in grade um, 11. So any 10- Thank you, sir. Any tan ratio you can divide with sin over cos. So tan, tan theta or alpha or whatever, tan theta is sin theta divided by cos theta. You must be able to do that change. And sin square plus cos square is one. In other words, sin square x, for instance, is one minus cos square x. I don't need to explain that. Or cos square x equals one oh. minus sin square x. Okay, so these are deductions from your identity. I'll show you the sums now. We're gonna copy and paste, do one at a time. Um, and then we're gonna move over to triangles. Right, good. Uh, it's gonna look difficult and weird now, but you only need to follow those two rules to be actually be, be able to do all the sums. And there's That's a specific uh, format that they want you to do it. So they're going to give you something like this. You must prove that tan square x minus sin square x equals sin square x times tan square x. So we're always going to start at the left-hand side. So the left-hand side is tan square x minus sin square x. Now, we can change tan into sin over cos. And we can change sin square x plus cos square x to one. Or we can change one to sin square plus cos square. So if I look at this uh, left-hand side, I can change the tan into sin square over cos square minus sin square. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Good. Now I'm going to get a common denominator, which is cos square x. So I'm the, multiplying the bottom with one. So I'm going to multiply the top with one. And then I just get sin square x. And this negative sin square x over one, I'm going to multiply at the bottom with cos and the top with cos. So I get the same denominator. So that becomes minus sin square x times cos square x on top. And then I'm factorizing. Can you see I can factorize sin square out of the um, two terms on top? Can yes, everyone sir. see that? Yes, sir. Bianca? 
Yes, sir, I am listening. Okay, one minus cos square x. And that's divided by what? Cos square x. You see that? Yes, sir. Right, now what? Was that clever to do? I think so. Can anyone see what we can do now? Um, oh, not yet, sir. Oh, yes, I, I know, but yes, sir. Um, sir? Yes. I think we can like um cross out since like we have two like um yeah can we cancel common vectors the like the cos no uh, you the can't cancel it's a, it's a separate term okay just want to check if there's something better we could have done no 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 we have a common denominator which is good. Um, I can write this. Look at this. What is one minus cos square x? Look at that. If I leave the sin x on the left hand side, sin square x, then I have one minus cos square x, if I just take the cos over to that side. So instead of 1 minus cos square x, I can write sin square x. So this will give me sin square x. And then in brackets, there's another sin square x, because 1 minus cos square x is sin square x. And that I write on top of cos square x. Now I can make this sin divided by that cos into tan. And then that sin remains on top. So this is new. And then I get exactly my right hand side. Therefore, my left hand side equals my right hand side. So basically, this is not, this is basically algebra. Trigonometry just flows into algebra. We factorized, we used our uh, identities to actually get this. So that purple thing became this sin square x because of this identity there. I just threw the cos square x over to the other side. Screenshot this. Then I have to show you two, two or more. Other. Look, this is not a lot of marks in the exam, but it is important that we get it right. Did you screenshot that? What do you want um, to know? Yes, sir. Start to? Um, let me screenshot faster. Um, uh, Screen yes, I just finished, sir. Good. Yes, sir. Okay, look at this one. Right, now we have a small problem. There are no identities that we can use. So I don't have any tan x that I can convert into sin over cos. Nor are there any sin squares or cos squares. There's your two identities. One, two. So now, I wonder if you can remember the following. When you rationalize the denominator You remember that? If I ask you to rationalize that denominator, what would you do? You would multiply the top and the bottom with what? One plus root three, is that correct? Hello. Yes. I hope that you can do this because this is some yes, of the algebra you've done. Why do I do this? Because then I get the difference between two squares at the bottom. I only need to multiply the one with the one. And that is one. And then I multiply the negative root three with plus root three. And then I get negative root three times root three is three. 
And then the top part, I need to multiply the three with the one and the plus root three. So I multiply the bottom with the bottom and the top with the top. Now this is kind of easy because one minus three is negative two. Now I have a single term as a denominator. And once you've got that, you can actually do the sum. Are you with me? Can you remember this? No. Yes, sir. Good. Now look at what I'm doing here. Because I don't have any, the left-hand side is cos x. I don't have any identity I can use. I'm going to rationalize that denominator into one term. There are two terms there. And I want only one term as a denominator. Okay. So I'm going to multiply with 1 minus sin x on top of 1 minus sin x. Exactly what I did. There was 1 minus root 3. So I multiplied top and bottom with 1 plus root 3. We start to now. Are you back? You disappeared, Tatu. Oh, sorry, sir. Uh, my internet right now is a bit unstable. Okay. Can you look at what I've done here? Yes, sir. Why is it 1 minus sin x? Because you're trying to rationalize the thing, right? Yeah. Now I only have to multiply 1 with 1. That is 1. And plus with a minus is a minus. And sin x times sin x is sin square x. And top, I'm going to multiply the cos with 1 minus sin x. Exactly what I did on the right-hand side. Now, what is 1 minus sin square x? Look at this identity. Tell me what is 1 minus sin x. Yes, sir. 1 minus sin x. It is cos square x, isn't it? Yes, yes sir. I just throw this the sin over. So the bottom, I have cos square x. And top, I have cos x times 1 minus sin x. And then what happens? One of these coses cancel with one of those. Therefore, I have 1 minus sin x on top and cos x at the bottom. And that is exactly what my right-hand side is. Therefore, my left-hand side equals my right-hand side. So in grade 11, it's not difficult. This is just going to feel very new because you haven't done any of this. So if you can do these three things, then you can actually solve all your identity sums. I'm going to show you something that looks difficult. And once you've used your identities, you're going to find out it's so easy. Just um, screenshot that. Yes, sir. Uh... Can you tell me when you're finished? I'm done, sir. Okay. Last one. I'm going to leave you to it because you need to do some of these sums out of your textbook. You need to move on. Yes, sir. Right. I'm going to write the identities down and you're going to try and do something with the left-hand side. So sin square x plus cos square x is 1. And tan is sin divided by cos. See if there's anything that you can do with the left-hand side. Remember, you don't have to solve it in one step. You can only do one little thing at a time. Sure. Okay, that's like an unfair, really unfair example. Damn. You can only see it now. Sorry, this was a difficult example for you. I expect you to do. I'll make you do the next one. This one is too difficult. Why? When was the last time that you factorized something that's got to the power of three? Let's just factorize the following. In a while. P3 minus Q3. Let's just factorize that. It's a small bracket and a big bracket. Then I've got P to the power of one minus Q. And then in that long bracket, I square the first term, p square. And I take that sign, that negative, and I change it. And I multiply these two things with one another. 
then I get PQ. And then I square Q, and I get Q square. So that was what you, you learned in, in grade 10. Yes, sir. It's kind of unfair, actually, but that's how it is. Okay. So what we can do, we can also factorize that on top there with our left-hand side. Small bracket, big bracket. That becomes sin x minus cos x. And then I square sin x, I get sin square x. I multiply those two with a different sign, becomes sin x times cos x. And then I square the cos. So it becomes plus cos square x. That's factorized. And then 1 plus cos x times sin x. I'm going to make that one bracket. Now I see this identity there. Sin x plus cos x. So what is sin x plus cos x? Isn't it one sir? Yes. So those two blue things are one. And then I have plus sin x times cos x. And at the bottom, I have one cos x times sin x. Let me just get that times. So, sir, can't you cancel it out? Yes. Look, I can see the answer. There's the answer. <laughs> so those two things are going to cancel. And then I get sin x minus cos x, and that's the answer. Therefore, the left-hand side equals my right-hand side. Right, so what you need to do, you need to go to the section in your textbook on identities and start doing stuff like that. Just remember, I'm not here to, to teach through the syllabus with you. I'm here to help you with stuff that you're struggling at the moment. Yes, sir. So you can't lean on me okay, to, sir. to finish the syllabus for you. I'm here to support you. Okay, so my homework for you, I'm going to give you identities to do. I'm going to put it on WhatsApp, give you some identities to do. Next. Thank you, sir. Triangles. Okay, very important. And now you must look. This is a new... Who have you got? Both of you got signs as well, eh? Yes, sir. So you've might you've might come across the sin rule. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, Very sir. important. In grade ten, the triangles we used always had a ninety degree in. So it was easy. If that uh, was alpha, and this was like say for instance, ten centimeters, and this was uh, sixteen centimeters. You could have said sin alpha is 10 over 16 and then solve alpha. That was easy. But now your triangles are not going to have 90 degrees in it. They, they can, but you must be able to do solve triangles that doesn't have a 90 degree angle in it. And therefore, you're going to use the sin rule, the cost rule, and the area rule. I'm just going to get those equations up for you. and examples. It's not difficult. It's going to look difficult, uh, but I'll show you an easy way out to, to, to actually visualize them. Right, so these are your three rules. So I have the sin rule. Yeah, this is called the sin rule. And they are proofs for that in your textbook that you have to learn. This is called the area rule. And this is called the cost rule. Okay, we're gonna start with the sin rule. Because if you've done some science, vectors and stuff, you've used this sin rule before. So now I have a triangle. I'm just gonna get those rules here. I'll, I'll, I'll show you now when we're going to use the sin and when we're going to use the cos rule. So if I want this angle now, alpha, and this is like 8 meters. And I have another angle, 
let's say 62 degrees and this one is 11,5 meters. And I want to know what is the angle alpha. Then what you're going to do, you are going to get a, take a line from the angle and just draw it opposite towards the side. And then you go to the other angle and you draw a line opposite to that side across. So what do we want? We want this angle. This angle is opposite that side. So I'm going to use the sin rule because I can find something that is opposite an angle that I have both the angle and the side. So if I want the angle, it's going to be sin of that angle on top of eight meters. So it's the angle on top of the side. And that equals an angle that I've got, sin of an angle that I've got, on top of a side that I've got. You understand what I've done? I've put the, uh, my two fractions equal to one another. Angle on top of side and yes, angle sir. on top of side. But important, one of the two combinations, you must have both values. Otherwise, you can't use the sin rule. And I'm going to multiply with 8 right through to get that denominator away. just want to get some space here. So sin alpha is therefore 8 sin 62 over 1, 11,5. I multiplied both sides with 8. So these 8s cancel, and 8 just jumped on top in front of the sin, basically. Now I'm going to type in my calculator 8 sin 62 divided by 11,5. I just want to check if it actually works. Not all of the angle combinations work with the sin rule. Right? Then I have a certain answer. Okay, you have sin alpha is 0, 0,614, and there's a lot of decimals. And then I type in, in my calculator, shift sin answer. So shift sin of 0, 0,614, but I don't type 0, 0,614 in the calculator. I press answer because that includes all the decimals. So it's shift sin answer equal. And then I get 37,9 degrees. That's rounded off to two decimals. Please have a look at that. That's quite important. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. That's what I got as well. Okay, very good. You've used this, but not with the angle on top. You've used this in your vector diagrams when three vectors are in equilibrium. Yes, sir. You used it to determine the tension in a rope or something. So you had a, a triangle like that, for instance. And I yes. gave this as 80 degrees and let's say 150 whatever meters. And then we gave this as like 58 degrees and we had to solve X. X might have been a tension in a rope or something like that. Okay, let's do that. X is across 58 degrees and 80 and 150 50 across one another. But this time I want the side. So I'm going to put the side on the top and then sin of the angle, which is 58 opposite it. And then a combination of side on top, angle at the bottom. And then I'm going to multiply with 50, sin 58 right through. And therefore X is 150 sin 58 divided by sin 80. And there's no second functions or shifts here because we're not looking at an angle or trying to determine an angle. We are just trying to get the side and therefore there's no second functions or nothing. So I get 129,67 meters. Boom. Photograph that. So I'm a little confused. Yes, I'm listening. So I got 129,16 Nine. Oh, I'm also confused. Yeah, I just didn't read the calculator. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes. No, yeah, yes. Sorry. It's okay. Tatu, got it? Yes, sir. Good. Good. Okay, cool. So these are the two variants. You either need to, need to determine the angle or the side. Then there's an exception. 
or something important. If you are asked to determine the angle opposite the longest side, there might be two answers or solutions. Okay, so let's try this one. This is X, that's an angle. And this is, let's say 18 meters or centimeter, whatever. Then I have another angle here, let's say 48 degrees. And this is like 15 meters. I just want to check if it's going to work actually. Um, want to just double check if it's working. Um, 18. will work now very important that drawing is not on scale so if i want to know what the angle is opposite the longest side the the triangle might even look something like this giving it an what obtuse angle okay let's just go uh, there's my one combo, and there's my other combination. Whoops, that's a bit skew. So let's just draw that, okay? So I want to know the angle. So it's sin of the angle over 18 equals sin of 48 over 15. I'm going to multiply with 18 right through. Then I have sin x equals 18 sin 48 over 15. I'm going to type that in my calculator and do shift sin answer. Shift sin answer. And then x equals 63, comma, what? 1, actually. It's 096, so it becomes 1 degrees. But... I can also have an obtuse angle just because I'm doing the, the angle opposite the longest side. I can also have 180 minus 63,1 degrees. So I'm just going to do 180 minus answer. And then we're going to test that if it works. 116,9 degrees. Okay, so now we have to test that answer. So... If it's 116,9 degrees and I add another 48 degrees, is there still room for a third angle? That gives me 164,9 degrees. Yes, there is still room for a third angle. So both answers are accepted or both answers yes, are sir. true. Do you understand what I've did, just did? Yes, sir. Okay. Would you agree? That if we add an answer here of 140 degrees, then that answer will be non-applicable. Yes, sir. Because then we can't add another 48. That tally takes us above 180, and therefore that angle is not applicable. Try. Good. Um, snapshot this. Then I'm going to give you an example to do. Can I continue? Yes, sir. Yes, I already have it. Okay, good. This is, uh, let's say, 78 degrees. This side is Y. This is like 39 degrees. And this is 11 centimeters. What is Y? And you have two minutes. I'm back in two minutes, then I want to answer. Oh, I. I 
Okay, how are we doing? Yeah, I got it. I think I got it. Okay, Todd, to answer. Um. Okay, it was. Uh, I am still. Okay, Bianca, answer. Okay, so I took sin seventy eight over, and then I got eleven sin seventy eight. No, uh, over. Did you do this? Oh yes, sir. I did do that. Okay, so very important. Always put that thing that you want on top. Yes, sir. And then the, the, yes, the sir, 78. Yes, Pardon? That's what I did, sir. Okay, cool. Very good. And then on the other side, I'll have 11 centimeters over 739. Yes, sir. Good. Oh. And then I took... Sorry. Uh, so I did it the other way. I put the sign 39 on top of the 11. Yeah, you can, but it makes it harder. And there's a reason I want you to do it this way. These sums are actually going to go haywire. Okay. They are become they are going to become very difficult. And then I'm, I'm teaching a method now which you will be thankful for when the sums become very difficult. Okay. So it's not wrong that you what you've done. You could swap it around. You can flip both sides around. It's not wrong, but you're going to make it difficult for yourself. So now I've got y equals 11 sin 78 over sin 39. I put that in a calculator. I get 17 comma one. 17 comma one, whatever centimeters. Okay, I know it's right mm -hmm. because look at these angles. Oh, so, oh centimeters. The, the, the 39 only opens to 11 centimeters. The 78 is a much bigger angle, so it must open to a much longer side. The 17 centimeters is much longer than the 11. Good. Right. Yes, okay. Now look at the following. The cos rule. The cos rule, A square equals B square plus C square minus 2BC cos A looks like a whole mouthful but it's not it's actually very easy there are two triangles that we can't use the sin rule in and for those two triangles we're going to use the cost rule the one triangle is when you have an included angle so now i've got nothing across one another that I have both values of or if i have a triangle and i give you all three side lengths in those two triangles we use the cost rule. So let's start with the first one. I'm giving you this angle of, let's say, 68 degrees. And I'm giving you this is 11,5 centimeters. And this one is 15 centimeters. And I want to know, what is the length of y? What is y? Right. So in the cost rule, you're either going to find try and find the side which is a square, that's the side you're going to try and get, or you're going to try and get an angle, which is big A. The B's and the C's are just the two adjacent sides. In other words, B and C are just these two sides that are adjacent to the angle. The angle that you've got or the angle that's been asked. Yes. So that's really easy. So if you just take that rule and you just put Y in A's place, so y square equals, and b is one of those two sides, let's say 15, so it's 15 square, plus 11,5 square, minus 2, times 15, times 11,5. So b's and c's are just those two adjacent angles, and then I do cos 68. Then I can put that whole thing in my calculator as it is, and just take the root of the answer. I get 228 comma something, root of that, 15 comma 1. This we have got interesting values today. Y equals 15 comma 1 centimeters. 
15,1, sir. Yeah. What did you get? Bianca? Yes, sir. I got 15,1. Just type it in again, Tartu. Yes, sir. That's what I got, 15,1. Oh, oh. I thought you were asking. Okay, good. This is the one triangle. In this triangle, you had an included angle. So if you look at the triangle, yes, again, there's nowhere I can do, I can do this opposite one another, but there's no angle opposite the 11 and there's yes, no angle opposite the 15. So I can't use the sin rule. I have to use the cos rule. Let's do the other a triangle. So in the next triangle, I'm going to give you both uh, all three side lengths. Right, so let's do a triangle. Um, oops, that doesn't look nice. So here I have 104 centimeters and I have 120 centimeters and I've got 90 centimeters and I want this angle in X. So if I look at my equation, I want that one, the angle. And the side that is opposite that angle is this one here. And the two sides that are adjacent to the angle are just B's and C's. So A square is 104 square. That is B, which is maybe 90, plus C, which is 120 square, minus 2 times 90 times 120, cos X. Now, this is slightly different because I have two terms here that you can't add or subtract from one another. I can't add or subtract the cos x from the 90 plus 120 square. So I'm going to throw that over. This becomes 104 square minus 90 square minus 120 square is minus 2 times 90 times 120 cos x. So basically, my, my fraction, if I divide that away, will look like this. 104 square minus 90 square minus 120 square divided by minus 2 times 90 times 120, and that will equal cos x. So let's put that in a calculator, and then I do shift cos answer. That is like 2,921 over 5,400. And then I just shift cost answer. 57,25. See if you get that. Um, Degrees. And then you just take some time to either to write it all down or just. Um... Sir, I'm a little confused. Okay, good. Did I round? So, what is your answer? 57,25 degrees. Oh, I got 57,3. Really? Yes, sir. Okay. Let's type it in again. Uh, Bianca, let's just solve your, where are you slightly confused? So when I put it into my calculator, it gives me a completely different answer. Like it gives me that big answer, but then I don't know what to do after that. Okay. So you typed in 104 square on top of the bracket, minus 90 square, minus 120 square. And then on top of negative yes, sir. times 90 yes, sir. Okay. Then I press enter. That's two thousand yes, two nine two one over five four double zero. Yes, I got that. Okay, so let's just write that down. Who's there with you, Tartu? As I'm alone. Oh. Okay, you got this, Bianca. Yes, sir, that's exactly what I got. 
Okay, then to get rid of the cost, you need to type in shift cost, and then I just press answer, and it takes that fraction into the answer, into that, and then I get 57,25. Do that. So I type in cost to the power of minus one answer. That answers, so my calculator puts that fraction into the answer bracket. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Okay. Did you get 57,25? I rounded it off. Yes, sir. Yeah. I've also rounded off. But I didn't round off here, Tartu. Because I'm not I rounded off. I rounded off my final answer. What's your final answer? 57,3. I did it to one decimal place. No. You have to use two decimal places. If possible. Oh. Unless it's stated. Okay, last one. Snap that. Yes, sir. Right. Area rule. Area rule. The area rule is the area of a triangle equals half a b sin c remember the area of a triangle can also be calculated half base times the times uh, perpendicular height that still does work eh? <laughs> yes, the the only limitation to this is you have to be able to, or you have to work in a triangle that's got a 90, 90. angle otherwise you can't use that so in trigonometry, you're very seldom going to use that. But if you have a 90 degree angle, you can use it. But you can also use the area rule. Now, the area rule you can only use if you have a triangle with an included angle. Okay. If you have both sides next to that angle that you're using, only then you can use it. So, let's make that smaller. So I have a triangle here. This angle is 69 degrees. And we have 15 centimeters here and 18 centimeters there. And let's make it A, B, C, or P, P, Q, or doesn't matter what it is. It can be W, V, S. Doesn't matter what the angle is. The area of the triangles is as follows. It's half. Then A, B is just the two adjacent sides. 15 times 18. And cos, a sin rather, of the angle in between those two sides, 69. Right. And then you just put that in your calculator as is. hundred and twenty six comma oh three. One twenty six comma oh three centimeter squared look at that it's quite easy i got that sir you must be also be able to prove yes, sir. triangle yes i'm listening there's a proof for all three of these the sin the cost and the area rule there's proofs in your textbook that you have to learn okay you will get one of them and there'll be five marks. Yes, if you haven't studied it, then you won't be able to do it. Promise. Okay, so now I'm going to give you um, a problem to try and solve. I have a triangle here. And let's say this angle here is 53 degrees. And this side here is, let's say, 10 meters. And this side here is... 8,2 meters. I want to know in PQR what is the area of the triangle? What's the area of triangle? Oops, let me get a pen that works. PQR. 
Okay. Before we start, can you maybe give me a problem or something that makes a sum difficult? What is wrong with this triangle? Um, so isn't like the angle uh, is supposed to be between the two sides, the sides that are given the, yeah. yeah. It's supposed to be by P, yes. Yeah, I need that angle. So I need to use another rule to try and find that angle. Maybe I need to get Q first, because if I have Q, then I have P. Okay. So see if you can find angle Q first. Okay. You have five minutes um, to complete the sum. Uh, okay. Sir? Yes. Okay. If you need any help. Oh. Uh, sir? Yes. Therefore, the, the length of QR is going to be 5,72. Whoa. How do you get the length of QR? Hmm. What did you use, Doc? Um, since PR is the longest side, I said 10 squared minus uh, 8 comma 2 No, squared. you don't have any 90 okay. degrees in this triangle. You can't use Pythagoras. Oh, damn. You can only use Pythagoras if you have got a, a, a right angle triangle. Okay. Sir. We are going to basically say bye to Pythagoras. <laughs> okay, sir. Can't be us, right? Um, I would uh, rather do something like this. And then I can find Q. Maybe you want to use the sin rule to find Q. Do you need help? Uh, sir? Yes? I think the answer is, uh, oh, let me just calculate, 76,89. Degrees? Yes, sir. Is that for Q? That's for, yes, for Q, yes, sir. To Bianca? Yes, so that's what I got because I used okay, the just... sin rule. Okay, sin Q over 10 equals sin 53 over 8 comma 2. I'm going to multiply 10 through. Sin theta is 10 sin 53 over 8 comma 2. Right, I type that in shifts and answer. Moi, very good. Only thing is what I'm going to do. Even though I'm going to write 76,892, whatever, I'm going to determine P the following way. 180 minus 53 minus 76,892. I'm not going to write 76,892. In my calculator, I'm going to do 180 minus 53 minus answer. That puts in all the decimals. And that gives me 50, 1076 degrees for P. So I get 50, 11. Yeah, because you rounded off somewhere. Yes, sir. 
no rounding off until we get the final answer. And then I can move over and say the area of the triangle equals half. The one side is 8 comma 2. The other side is 10. And then sin or 50 comma 1076 or answer again. Thirty one comma four six. Meter square. That was really long. Yeah, that was long. Yeah. You need to be able to do these uh, very well. The work that we're gonna do after this is gonna be slightly problematic if you can't do these triangles. I'll show you what it looks like, uh, but don't be scared or overwhelmed. Um, once you get these three rules going and you could do sums, the ones that I sent you or the ones in your textbook, then you should be able to be to do the work very well. I'm going to show you what's waiting. They are basically going to basically going to remove all the angles and values. So make sure you've got this um, snapped or a screenshot of this. I got it too. Okay, look at this. Okay, this is not of Afrikaans, but basically, what it's saying is that use the drawing next adjacent and prove that AD equals BE times sin Z times sin X plus Y in brackets over cos X times sin Y. So you must be able to prove that that purple line is all of that. It's not going to be difficult. I'll show you how to do it. Um, but that before we get here, you need to know or understand the simple cost rule very well. Okay, one more. I'm giving you a triangle. You're on your own. And this is A, B, C, whatever. This side is 15. No, we've done a lot of 15s. Let's get away from 15. 20 centimeters. This side is 30 centimeters and this side is nine centimeters and I want this angle here x quickly calculate the angle x you must first decide if you're going to use the symbol okay hmm. So we're not calculating area, we're calculating the angle. Yeah, angle X. What is X? So look at the triangle, triangle and ask yourself, is it sin or cos rule? It's cos. Uh... Very good. It's the cos rule. Excellent. A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. A is obviously X. The angle and the side opposite is 30 so there's 30 square equals 9 square plus 20 square minus 2 times 9 times 20 cos x good there you go oh 
Oh, second up, you write this down. Yeah, this this is the last sum we're gonna do, so it's fine. Um, my calculator says it can't. I've got a calculator supposed to be able to solve it as it is, but it can't. So it's dumb. So 30 square minus 9 square minus 20 square divide with minus 2 times 9 times 20 equals cos x. I get a sign text error. I also oh. have a sign text error on my calculator. And the reason is probably because that nine centimeters is way too low. Let's just make it a 19. I don't know why I get, oh, I get syntax error. The nine is going to be too low, but impossible value. Let's make that a 19. 19. I just want to check. check I also have a syntax error. Sometimes these are, I'll show you why sometimes synonym costs can't have certain values. I've just pushed the boundary too far, I think. So when it's 19, then the answer is 100, comma, comma 54. Ah, very good. X is 100, comma 54 degrees. Yeah, I got that. Very good. Okay, excellent. So what I'm going to do now is send you some examples to do. Yes, sir. Yeah. Math, we're doing every day. Yes, sir. We know you're test sorting. Are you doing test? Yes, no? sir. Pardon? I'm not writing gen. Uh, no, not you. I'm writing geo this Friday, but math, I'm writing like next week or next weeks and physics. You're not writing next week. I'm starting this week to write, so. When are you writing that? So I'm writing that on the 4th of June. Okay, let's just go there quickly. Why are you writing on different dates than other oh. students? Let me check. Uh, the 4th of June. The other impact students are writing maths on the 7th of June and on the 11th of June. No, so I write two uh, maths exams. So it's on the 4th and I think the 7th. I'm not too sure. Everyone else is writing maths first paper on the 7th and maths second paper on the 11th. Yes, uh, correct. Okay. So I can double check, but I'm not too sure. Yeah. It would be very, very interesting if you're writing it on different dates because she's not supposed to have. Okay. okay what, I'll do is, what I'll do is I'm going to send you some examples now. And um, I have other revision classes that uh, I want to incorporate. What I'm going to do, I'm going to send you. Um, Monday the 31st, there's, a, there's another, there, there's some extra lessons that I've actually put in. Okay, sir. So we have the option, just, just uh, Tatu and sure. Bianca, just listen here. You have the option of joining 
an Afrikaans class if you want to. I'll make those classes bilingual if I have to, so that we can get more work done. Oh, so I'll I'll join them. Tatu? Yes, sir. I'll be able to join, sir. Is you good with this, Hmm? Sir? You understand a bit of Afrika Afrikaans? Mm, slightly. Yes, sir. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I am going to mix these classes so we can get more revision done. Okay. Yes, sir. I'll send you a roster of what's happening. Okay. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Pleasure. Keep well. Okay, have a good day. You too, sir.